So, you know, so once again, us artists are the fools. And like you said, we can't blame nobody but ourselves, right? Go ahead. Can I say something too? Artists, we all got to realize is that our love for our craft is like our religion. It's mm -hmm. personal. Mm -hmm. When you deal with everybody else, it's a business. That's right. That's right. And don't right. because I know, like, I'm also an actor too. And I've noticed that a lot of people, when they want to work from you, they're going to excuse my language. They're going to force you. Oh, yeah. And they're going to say, I'm oh, really going to fall. Um, they're gonna they're gonna really play that game on you to get your work from your friend. That's what they're supposed to do. If you don't know what you're doing when you come to the table, they ain't supposed to meet you at the back door. They're not supposed to meet you at the side door. They're supposed to meet you at the table. But if you ain't at the table, guess what? They're supposed to get you. And there seems to be an unwritten rule. Once again, it goes back to that person who invented that word, starving artist. Mm -hmm. It still goes back to whoever that person is. We gotta find that person, dig them up, whatever it is, <laughs> punish them. You know, because like you said, it, it, it's, it's a mindset. I, I, everywhere you go in this world, people think that, oh well, artists, you know, they don't really know what they're doing, and we're gonna get over on them. They just seem to know this. Now, how is that happening with our profession, but nobody else? I always tell people, I'm like, if you go get some plumbing done, or you go get your TV worked on, I don't care your car worked on, they're going to say, okay, you want your fender fixed, this is how much it costs, da -da 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 -da. here's the piece of paperwork, here's the quote, right in front of you, right? Now, how come it doesn't work for the artists? One of the problems, too, huh? is that typically the artist himself does not know what the value of his work is. Exactly. And, and that's why... Hey, And that's why we're here. You have to reach out to other artists or people around you that you can find. If they're not around you, then you go somewhere else. But you have to continually seek this knowledge because nobody's going to tell you. I know lots of artists that go to school, to, the, to uh, SCAD AI and all these other art schools and spend a lot of money and learn the technique. And then they don't know what they're doing once right. they get out into the exactly. real world and the business. Exactly. And that's what's tough. Exactly. So anyway, you're both been doing things I want to touch. How did y'all value your work? Because I've got a tape largely because the amount of like that. That was my question. Okay. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, 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 <laughs> we're both going to answer this. We're one, opening so the floor to everybody now that just started. That's great. Thank you for the Black Book. We are streaming live, RouteTV.com. Thank you very much for Liberty. She's making it happen. And we're going to continue on with the conversation. Go All right, ahead. We're going to both answer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, okay. From my, from my uh, experience, uh, I've been, you know, both the, the guy who's been gotten over and I've been in situations where it's like, ah, uh, yeah. Okay. You know, you feel as though you really got yours on that job. I ain't going to say I got over. I got paid, you know. I got, I got paid on that one. That was easy. That was a couple of sessions. You know what I mean? So, um, part of it came from uh, uh, having those having those experiences. Not to say y'all got to go through. I'm just saying that's what happened with me. I had experiences where uh, I, underso I undersold myself. Um, I started seeing other artists who were doing what I was doing at lesser at lesser quality, but getting more money. Um, for example, when I used to airbrush at the mall in Philly, you know, I would like put in like my all, oh, like, you know, I would do like uh, caricatures, I was doing all types of stuff that you just wasn't seeing on shirts. And there was this other guy who came and was doing shirts like real quick, I mean, I just thought it was sloppy, you know what I mean? And when people were asking how much, he'd be like, uh, $80. And it'd be like something I would probably only charge like $20 for. And I saw people, oh, okay, they were paying. So when I came back to start airbrushing, I said, nah, I'm not doing like, you know, because I was, I was a young kid, you know, going through that, like you said, that fear factor of asking for money. But then I realized he put his price on his work. It didn't matter what I thought it was worth. He thought it was worth $80. So I couldn't even be mad at him to say, oh, man, that's whack, man. You know, you charge $80. <laughs> but you know, that's not, that's, the, the thing is, he put the value on it. So it's up to the customer to decide if it's worth it, and the people were paying for it. So then when I came back, I upped my prices. Actually, I es escalated them beyond his. So I said, you know what, if, if they're paying that, then I'm going to start charging this. You know, then sometimes it'd be like $100 or whatever. And, um, and, you know, this is like in the 80s, so, you know, uh, it, that was like a lot of money for me back in the day. Everybody was getting something there, Brush. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so then moving on into, like, more of a... Uh, the prof 
professional field, like dealing with production studios or dealing with design firms and stuff like that, it was like starting all over, but still I had that concept of my value. So when they say, uh, we need an album cover for such and such, or we need a design for this or that. Actually, that book I was telling you about, Pricing and Ethical Guide Guidelines, it, it, it kind of shares with you what, kind of gives you like a, a going rate, a guideline of what people are charging for specific jobs like what you might do. So then you'll know, like, uh, if you ask for something, it's, it's fair to ask for that price within that range. You know what I mean? So sometimes you may have to negotiate with somebody because even though you may be worth 2500 for a particular illustration, they may only have a budget of 1200 so at that point, it's up to you to say, well, do I want to settle for 1200 or no, I'm only worth 2500 and if you don't have 2500 I can't do the job. So it, that, at that point, it becomes up to you what you want to do. I've done things where it's like, I know it's worth more than that, but it didn't hurt me. I was like, I did it. And then actually, I thought of the bigger picture that I'm actually in print now, and it's in a printed job, and that job actually got me more jobs, and it became more of a portfolio piece, and I didn't do it for free. I got something out of it, and it helped me at a time where I, I kind of needed it. But a lot of times they play on us because they know you need something. Right. So you've got to kind of find the balance between just being desperate, and now you have a reputation of being the cheap guy, <laughs> and um, That's right. in some instances, okay, they don't have the budget for it, then they may say what their budget is, and then you decide, okay, I can work with you on that. But then you may say, okay, but y'all don't get like the cherry on top, you get this much, you know, instead of all that. So, um, so it all depends on how you handle it, and, and it takes time because you, you have to, uh, this is a learning experience, but part of it comes from researching, like Dan was saying, talk to other artists, find out uh, their perspective, um, and, and then eventually you'll figure it out because, because a lot of it is uh, it's just straight business, and sometimes we're, we're afraid to ask somebody something, but usually, we, especially when we deal with companies, companies already know it's going to cost. Uh, a couple G's or something to do with illustration as opposed to like you dealing with somebody on the street where they don't really understand art where it's like it, it should only be like $50 mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that's like, you know you my whole family got like 10 people in the family you know? $50 that's what I'm saying yeah, they, right tell you, they tell you uh, you already got the pens on your hand oh, you already yeah, got the paper you. yeah you got some questions go ahead How do you balance it's called uh, reproduction? No, <laughs> no. Yeah, there you go. But no, but, but once again, it comes back to being real business again. Okay, first of all, this is another mistake artists make. You cannot just pull a number out of the sky. You can't do that because first of all, you don't even have a reputation built. Once again, it comes down to being psychology again. You have to have a reputation that's built that actually starts to make you worth saying the number you're saying. Because I'm around a lot of artists all the time that say, well, I did a great painting and that's worth $10,000. Well, guess what? Nobody knows you. Who's going to pay $10,000? Okay, it's just that damn simple. Okay? So, but once you actually establish a track record of what your work is worth, like I said, you might start off and it might be $50. Your first paid piece might be $50. I remember when I first did a painting. I did a painting. I was working for the NFL at the time. I did a painting for Paul Warfield. Anybody know Paul Warfield yes. back in the day? I did a painting. He hired me to do a painting of his whole life from high school, all these different segments, all the way to his Hall of Fame thing. And I got $1,000 for it. I thought that was like, wow, geez, okay? Okay, big time. Went straight and went and bought a cruise ticket. But, um, <laughs> but at least it established something. It was probably worth more. That's why he probably paid it right real quick. He's like, oh, kid, don't know, really. <laughs> you know, but it established a track record. From there, you start to climb up. You steadily climb and climb and climb and climb. So now, or either my work is, if certain clients buy my work, they say, if you buy a Neil Hamilton portrait of a certain size, it's going to be around this number. Because people are not dumb. All of us are good, smart consumers and shoppers. You, everybody goes out here and shop. You know what a, a, a shirt is worth or a blouse or a pair of jeans. You know that. 
And you know when somebody's ripping you off too, right? Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. Same thing applies in artwork, okay? You have to say, okay, if I hire this gentleman here, his work is that's $2,500 and it's well worth it. And next week it's going to be $2,500 again. Then the next person is going to be $2,500 again. Now it's consistent. They believe this now. It's not, it's not just a joke, okay? So when you have a consistency, it's just like if, if, if anybody in this room hires a contractor to come to their house to work on something, and, and if they showed up with no paperwork, a beat-up car they pull up in, or a truck with no sign on it, you're going to start feeling funny, aren't you? You just are, right? Same thing applies to artists. We have to walk up and act like we know what we're doing. You walk up and say, okay, I can do that for you. What's the space? Show me the space. Snap some shots. I think the decor should use this, this, this. You talk to them like you know what you're doing. I'm going to give you this side. Here's my price breakdown. When you actually pull out a price breakdown in front of somebody and say, I do portraits that are 8 by 10 cost you this much. Or if I do a 36 by 48, it's going to cost this much. If I do one this big, it's 18 foot pound, it's going to cost this much. And when you have it written out on a sheet and it looks real, people start to believe that. Mm -hmm. They start to believe. They say, this guy knows what he's doing. I don't know. I don't know if we want to talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, here's something that will make it very, very easy for everybody is people respect money. That's right. Like, uh, for example, like, uh, my work, like, 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 when, we, when it's free to get in, don't nobody want to go. But when we shut that door and say, it's $200 to get in, everybody pulls out money. Yep. It's psychology again. Yeah. It's really it's weird how it works. It happens, though. And I, I found this out. It happens, though. You can talk about it. It's dark. It just a lot of work. But as long as you know what you're talking about and you respect your uh, money and your business, they respect you. But if you go in there, like, on your knees, like, give me, give me, uh, I'll give you my work for free and stuff, they're not going to respect you. And that's why the phrase starving artist really kicked in everybody's mind. Because they're like, I guess, hey, they like starving. They actually believe that artists love being in that right. place. Like we, like we love being broke. Yeah. And it's stuck, man. It's stuck.